These are both ladies. Oh, oh, oh you're yes. hissing. Whoa! I know you're so mad at me. Make a friend. Whoa! Hey, everybody. My name is Laura. I am a PhD student studying entomology at a university. That's why we're holding a couple of different insects here. Um, so I want us to talk about insects because I've always been really interested in them um, since I was a kid, and I think a lot of other people relate to that too. So I've brought a couple of different insects today that I'm going to talk about. And the first one that I've brought is called a Madagascar hissing cockroach. Now you guys have probably seen these on TV and stuff, and I guess you're seeing it on your computer screen too. But I like to bring these um, because I think they're a really good example of insect diversity and kind of showing off a beneficial insect. Most of us think of cockroaches as these kind of like dirty, gross things that live in urban areas and spread disease and we don't really want them in our house or near us. But these guys are actually super beneficial. So they normally live on the forest floor and eat decaying matter and sort of clean it up and make it nice and healthy for the plants and other animals to live there. <laughs> they're also called hissing cockroaches because they make a hissing sound when they're disturbed. This gal over here is a little bit grumpy, you can see. So most cockroaches in the world are actually very beneficial. Only about 9% of roaches in the world are actually pest insects. So I just wanted to show off an example of something that was, you know, maybe we have an idea about. So we'll just put these gals back in their container. Come here, look. I know. Oh, wow. That's cool. They're real cute. Um, so one other thing that I really love about insects is that they are incredibly diverse and they have undergone millions and millions of years of evolution. And one thing that insects don't subscribe to, and I love it, is our heteronormative human standards. So I have an example of some stick insects that I brought today. And the reason why I love these gals so much is because all of the stick insects that we have in our collection at our university, and actually most stick insects in the world, um, do what we call parthenogenesis, which means they don't need males to mate. So they are the true definition of she don't need a man. Oh, snap, you go, girl. <laughs> so they kind of clone themselves. Um, they just lay fertilized eggs without ever mating. And every single one of them will always be female. And they're just really neat little bugs. Very charismatic, pretty big, very cute. I can't believe they look like little sticks. Like, you wanna try No. Them? This is Thank so you. cool. Oh my god. So they don't have very long antennae, so you can see she's kind of like waving her legs in front of her. She'll actually use those legs as another type of sensory organ. Um, so she won't walk forward until she feels that there's a place to walk. And this is how they're able to stay inside of the trees and stuff that they live in. Oh, cool. Falling. So is their vision okay? It's okay, like they can see lights and kind of shapes, but not really movement very well. And they don't really have a natural defense mechanism, so the way that they look is how they protect themselves from predators. Gotcha. Makes sense. Like, it looks like a real stick, like... Oh my gosh, this is so cool! My dreams have come true, guys. <laughs> so you said they're all gonna be born female? Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed my little bugo friends. Don't, Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like. If you want to see some more bugs, let me know. If you hated it, also let me know. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, the camera's still on? Oh. Um, well, since y'all are still here, how about you subscribe and like? I don't know. Click that shit. Thank you.